In order to fully understand Rumiko Takahashi and her contributions to the field of manga as a whole, you have to understand her place within that field. And that involves examining her influences, peers, and followers. This is what Orbiting Rumik World is dedicated to exploring. As Takahashi's star was on the rise in the early 1980s, there were mangaka that she was enamored with and those who were enamored with her. Hideo Azuma falls into the latter category. Born in Hokkaido in 1950, Azuma is only seven years older than Takahashi, but he began his manga career in 1969, almost a full decade before she debuted in Shonen Sunday. By 1972, he had his first hit, Futari Togonin, a gag manga published in Shonen Champion. Known for his interest in science fiction around the time of Takahashi's debut, Azuma once shared an anecdote in which his editor had stopped him from drawing sci-fi manga in Shonen Magazine. But then Takahashi debuted with Katana Yatsura in 1978, and he proclaimed, quote, Manga is back in Weekly Shonen Sunday and was so excited by the work that he bought three copies of the issue. As Takahashi was beginning her career, Azuma was attempting to leave the mainstream world of manga behind. His major success, Futari no Gonin, was something Azuma labeled as an impersonal work, of which he contributed only, quote, about 20% to, with the rest of the story and characters being decided upon by the editor. Azuma constantly asked to end the work but it was too popular, and so he endured working on the series, which was focused on dirty jokes and light eroticism to the end, until its popularity sank to the point that cancellation was finally allowed. In later years, Futari Togonin would be reprinted, and Rumiko Takahashi would contribute an essay about the work. After this, around 1979, Azuma would end all of his mainstream publication works, and focus solely on doujinshi and specialty manga magazines writing the science fiction work that he was most interested in, and which was well received amongst critics and fans alike. Ushering in what was called the new wave of science fiction manga, alongside Jun Ishikawa and Katsuhiro Otomo. It was while working on his doujinshi that Azuma truly revolutionized the manga industry for decades to come. In 1979, at Kamaket 11, Azuma published the doujin Cybel and created a new genre of manga, Lolicon. Lolicon is a portmanteau of Lolita complex and focuses on the sexualization of younger female characters. This originally began from Azuma's desire to depict erotic art using a facial design based on shoujo manga with the body type popularized by mangaka Osamu Tezuka and Shotaro Ishinomori. This immediately exploded in popularity and appealed directly to the growing otaku market of the early 1980s. It was at this time that Azuma and Takahashi's paths continued to intersect. In 1981, Hideo Azuma, Yosuke Takahashi, Junya Yokota, Uya Chiki, Neko Jujisha, Michio Hisauchi, and Rumiko Takahashi played the manga equivalent of a telephone game, with each adding to a story started by the other, with drawings of their characters to go along with it. Additionally, in 1982, while enjoying a second round of mainstream success, with Little Polon of Olympus and Nanako SOS both being adapted into anime, Azuma drew a parody of Rumiko Takahashi's Meizanikoku and Hayao Miyazaki's Future Boy Conan. Takahashi and Azuma continued to cross paths and even interviewed one another during this time. It was at this point of great success that Azuma began to show symptoms of depression and would go through what became known as his two phases of disappearances. He first left home and abandoned manga in 1989, venturing into the mountains to attempt suicide. However, this attempt failed and Azuma decided to live as a homeless person until he was located by police and returned home in February of 1990. Azuma would again leave home due to depression and alcoholism in 1990, this time taking up a new identity as Hideo Higashi and working as a gas pipe fitter for Tokyo Gas 
from February to August of that year. Eventually, he sought treatment for his addiction and abstained from alcohol after being released from an inpatient facility in 1999. Azuma used the tragedies of his life as material for a new manga, published worldwide in 2005. Shiso Nikki, or Disappearance Diary, was an autobiographical story depicting Ozma's life as an alcoholic, as well as his two disappearances, as a homeless man and a gas pipe fitter. The work received global critical acclaim, winning the grand prize for manga in the Japan Media Arts Awards, the grand prize for the Tezuka Osamu Cultural Prize, and a nomination at the Anglomé International Comics Festival. This is his only work translated into English at this time. In 2011, a retrospective of Azuma's career was put on display in Japan. Rumiko Takahashi drew an illustration celebrating his life's work. The drawing depicts an Azuma-style young girl and has a message saying, quote, The fun of Disappearance Diary reminds me that Hideo Azuma is a genius. Depressed Hide Diary, the girl's sketches are really cute. Take good care of yourself and entertain us all for years to come, please. After his passing in 2019 from cancer, as a gift to fans, a small publisher reprinted an extremely hard-to-find doujinshi that Takahashi and Azuma collaborated on. Seen here, you can see the respect the two had for one another throughout their professional lives.